Hi everyone. <laughs> Just gonna put a light in. We're in a new location today. We are not in the craft room, we're in the kitchen because I'm doing a long awaited video that a lady asked me to do, oh gosh, probably about a month ago now, which was, <laughs> I can't get my finger in my gloves, um, dyeing paper using food colouring. Okay, now I'm really not sure what you can see here. I've got an array of stuff. Um, that I kind of want coffee dyeing. That I want coffee dyeing. The others, yeah, they can all go in. Right, so all you need is some kind of um, tray. This is a big, massive Tupperware box. But all you need is some kind of tray or thing some receptacle that you can put water in basically in here i've got about i'd say about an inch and a half to two inches of water and all i do with my food coloring i'm going to use teal today and um, if you don't have food colorings i got this pack of 12 on ebay sorry it's really weird, I don't know where to be now. Um, 12 for £7, which £7 is a bit of an outlay, but they'll last for ages because you only use a few drops. But then if you've got some decanters, bottles, jars, things with tight lids on, you can then just pour this into a jar and keep it so you don't have to constantly remake it. So, first thing I'm going to do, if you can see me, you can see me, can't you, is just um, add. what. So, my normal thing is an inch and a half to two inches of water, and I just do a one, two, three, four, five. But I think that was a bit more than five. So, I'm doing teal today, because I think it's a nice colour, and I haven't got anything in teal. So, it'd be nice to have some bluey, tealy kind of papers. So I've added five drops there, which was probably more than five drops. All I would do now, let's just let me move them stencils. I know you're not going to be able to see everything I'm doing. Um, I'll try my best. It's very small is my kitchen. This here that you're looking at where this box is stood, it's about a foot wide. That is one of my work surfaces. Really not a lot of space in this kitchen. So all I do is I mix the dye into the water and then I just dip the end in and see how it is when it comes out. That is way too pale. So I'm going to go in and add more food colouring. So I'll do a one, two, that's, that was about three, four. <laughs> it's because I'm squeezing it. Some more drops come out at once. And mix it round. That's not looking a whole lot darker at the moment. So I'm going to do another one, two, three, four, five. Because I do want it pretty dark, actually. I do want a pretty dark-ish paper. So, and what I've found with dyeing with food colouring is, like some things when you dye them, they dry lighter. This doesn't particularly. Let's have a look. Oh, that's still really, really pale, isn't it? Don't want it that pale. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so we're going for more. One, two, three, four, five, six for good measure. <laughs> I think I've possibly got a bit too much water in here. Um, I usually go for an inch and a half to two inches. But I'm usually dyeing a lot of stuff, which I am today. I'm going to dye different things just so that you can see it happening. And literally you can dye anything. So you can dye graph paper, graph paper, lined paper, computer paper. I think I want that coffee dyed actually. Um, you can dye doilies, you can dye book pages. Doilies are hard. I find doilies hard. I don't really like dyeing doilies because they're so fragile. Uh, book pages, music pages. These were the only music pages I've got that are kind of a bit whitish. So what I normally do is just dip them in and I do both sides. And then I'll literally just lay them out on my cooker for now. 
and then when they're a little bit drier I take them into my hallway and I put them all the way up the staircase. What I like to do, I used to have a big banana box, so I'd turn that upside down and I'd lay the papers on that in the hallway. You can put them outside, there's loads of ways of drying them. So I'm just going to see what this looks like now, because so you just submerge it in the water and I'd let it soak for, I don't know, just a, a little while and then I turn it over. This is going to be a very pale teal. I think I want it darker than that, actually. Yeah, I do. I'm just going to sit that on top of that one because I'm going to do it in the end. I'm going for a really kind of a bit of a darker colour. Um, these little bottles, I know I'm putting a lot in this one, probably because I've put too much water in, but they do last a long time. And as I say, once you've got the solution made up, which is only water and food colouring, you can keep them in bottles, jars, Anything with an airtight lid, you can keep them then for, for however long you want them. So let's see if this is any better. Oops. It's a bit awkward in this kitchen because there really is not a lot of space. It's such a tiny kitchen. If my three cats are on the floor down here eating the food, I can't get past them to the cupboard at the end of the kitchen. It is a bit ridiculous. It's a brand new house, but I don't know why they designed it with such a stupidly small kitchen. But anyway, we can't have everything, can we? Unless we're millionaires and I'm not. So there we go. That's that's a very pale blue. And we're just going to leave that for now, that one, and say that's, that's not too bad. I'm going to do that one. And I know you might be looking at me in absolute horror thinking oh my dear she's putting dyed paper on a white cooker i am but it, it literally because it's food coloring it just wipes off so it's not a big deal I just i get i end up with splashes all over my fridge and all over my tiles but it all just wipes off i think i'm still not feeling this is dark enough it's just congregating in the middle which you can't really see because it's over there Looks good on there, but not really when you pull it out. Mm. Why did I decide to do teal and not another colour? <laughs> I'm going to bang some more stuff in here because I can. You see, different things will come out different colours. If you're using a really aged book page um, that's kind of a bit yellowy, then obviously you're going to get an, a different colour because the page is already yellowy. So, um, yeah, it's just a matter of dipping in. I dip them in, turn them over, let them have a soak for a little bit, but not, not for massively long, otherwise they go pulpy and you can't get them out. I'm not right happy with that one, to be quite honest. And I think the thing about laying them on the cooker, sometimes I put all tissue on the cooker, but then it just ends up a big gloopy mess. Um, this is getting a bit better, but it's, it's not that great, to be honest. Um, just let it drip off. I, I'm not impressed with this colour. Not really. But I'll carry on just for the sake of the video. Um, I would normally like a lot more colour in it than this. And what you sometimes find as well with things that you dye in is... Some things don't like to take the dye. Um, I did loads and loads and loads of ribbons and lace and all sorts of things. And they all dyed perfectly, except for satin ribbon. I bought two big reels of white satin ribbon. So I'm like, oh, I can dye it all different colours. If you've got white ribbon or white lace and you've got food colourings, you can have any coloured lace you want. But unfortunately, yeah, it didn't... It, it didn't fully take the colour sometimes. These are very light and unfortunately, because I don't know how to edit and all that, I don't have any pre-prepared, so I can't say, oh look, these are some I dyed earlier. I'll probably have to show you them on another video. I'm just going to get some graph paper and plonk that in. No, I'm not happy with this. I'm really not happy. Oh, there's a big fly. Do you know, the patio doors are open I've got two um, vinyl curtains and they still managed to get in. 
it. I don't know if you can hear it. It's a it's one of them big ones. I hate flies. I absolutely hate flies. So just dipping, turning. You could leave it in a bit longer, but the the thing with that is you don't want your paper to totally disintegrate. <laughs> so I just like to I don't mind if there's peaks and troughs and you've got darker bits in other areas. I don't mind that at all. I'm just going to lay that over there. Right, and now, if you can still see me, I'm going to stick some bed sheet in. So I've torn bed sheet into little, I don't know if you call them one inch strips, half inch strips and maybe two inch strips. So I'm going to stick some of them in. Get them going nice and teal. Sometimes with fabric, I do leave it in long. I've just lost my lace on the floor. Oh, nice when you can't bend down because you've got a dodgy knee. Right, here we go. I'm going to stick some lace in. And see, oh, that fly's driving me mad. They always fly right near you as well. Especially when you're in bed. They always fly right past your ear. If you don't get out of my kitchen, I'm going to squash you. I don't like killing things, but flies are an exception. <laughs> uh, so stick some more bed sheet in there. So you can coffee dye, you can tea dye, and you can do it in the same way as this. Um, lots and lots of, there's loads of videos on coffee and tea dye, and you'd probably be better watching somebody else's rather than mine, because I'm not that grand at it. I'm going to try and do a bit of stenciling today. Again, I'm not right good at that, so it's a bit of a, you know, learning curve. Now the sheet has taken it lovely. That's really nice. The lace, it sometimes still has little white bits, so I tend to leave the lace to soak a bit longer. Can you wear that? It's a massive fly. Huh. I really want that thing flying around the kitchen. So I've got some other graph paper here. I think I'll send this in a rack. So I'll have a bit of that. Oh my days, it's driving me mad. It's near kitchen window trying to get out. So yeah, you can you can still put things in if you've got your lace and stuff. So I can hope you can see this all right. Like I say, it's tiny in my kitchen. I don't have a right lot of room. And uh, oh, that's gone quite nice, that one. This is just a front page of a little notebook. But you can literally dye anything, whether it's just lined paper, graph paper, old newspapers, anything. You can dye anything. And it generally works pretty good. I've dyed loads of stuff with food colouring and it's always come out quite nice. Um, this is a little bit lighter than I wanted it, but I can live with it. I can live with it. And, all, and and different shapes and, you know, if it's a bit creased and it sits in the creases, it's all just, it all just adds to the interest on it, really. This is a bit of a thin page. I'm going to get this one out. So I just give them a little shake. Sit that on my cooker. <laughs> My cooker does end up blue, but it does go, it does go back to normal. Do you know, I was just getting everything set up and there were a fly in here. So like, I got it out. I thought I'd shut the door so it couldn't get back in. But <laughs> why is it they fly through the smallest gap in a curtain or the smallest gap in a window? But then they can't fly back out of a big massive open door. It's like, whoa. I'd flick you, but I don't want to die all over my kitchen. <laughs> I really don't like flies. I'm going to take some of this out because this looks quite nice. I don't know if this is all one piece. I think that is. And then I just squeeze it out. And I just hang it up somewhere to dry. So that that is actually quite a nice colour. I like that. I'm quite happy with that. That's nice. Um, for now, I'm just going to lay it on here. 
I usually hang it over my radiators to dry, even if they're not on. But um, <laughs> yeah, you do end up with dye all over, but because it's food colouring, it just wipes off. And you can pour it down the sink because it's food colouring. So if it's edible, it's obviously non-toxic. Otherwise, they won't be saying we can eat it. Although I don't know if I believe everything these days, but um, yeah, that's quite nice. I suppose the longer I leave it in the solution, the darker a teal blue it would be. But I quite like that. That's a nice blue. I like that. I'm going to leave the lace in. I'll get this little bit out. I might leave that in a bit longer, actually. The lace is doing all right. Can you see? The lace is doing okay. These, it's still some whitey bits, though, so I'm going to leave that in a bit. I think this is a lace that doesn't take it very well. Oh, trust me, to bring that one down. Right, I'm going to attempt. Oh, I don't really know about this. I'm going to attempt. Well, I'll do a couple of these first, these little book pages, and I'll just do them together. There's two pages there, but I don't mind if the middle bit's not completely coloured because it'll pick up some of it and that's fine. So these are just little um, English German dictionary pages, tiny ones. Might leave them in there for a minute. Get a couple of book pages. That's, that's two together. Let me get that apart. If I can, no I can't, can't be bothered. Okay, shove it in. Shove it in, I don't care. Get another book page. I want to attempt to doily, but doilies are just so fragile. It's like, they nearly break if you sneeze at them. And then when you wet them, I've got two here, but I'm gonna try it anyway. I'm just gonna go for it. Yeah, doilies are, I find doilies a bit, I love to see coffee dyed doilies on people's projects, but picking them up and keeping them from not breaking is not the easiest. I don't mind if it's a bit blue and white actually, because that looks quite nice. It's not taking the colour very well. I think I've actually got a bit too much water in here, to be honest. But hey, we live and learn. Everything is trial and error in this crafting game. You know, you've got to try things to know if they work. Um, I've got some more ideas for book pages as well. <laughs> um, I tell you what, there's just endless ideas for book pages. So I just stack these all up in a pooly mess and then gradually I move them to separate them and put them um, apart so that they they can dry properly. I could probably dry them outside today because it's quite nice. Uh, possibly. Just put you there. You're a double and I can't open you, so. Yeah, it's not going that great blue, is it, really? But, like I say, probably too much water. Less water, more dye, because I didn't really need all this water, to be fair. I thought with me dyeing bed sheets and all sorts of things, it would... I would need more, but actually I don't. Right, so that's a whole heap of mess that I'm not going to move at the minute because it's, um, yeah, it's a mess. So I'm just going to leave that there. What I do is I leave it on there till it's kind of starting to dry. Sometimes I put my ex cooker extractor fan on and that helps. Um, with these, if they're hung up, they do tend to do the gradient of colour better, but they also get very dark on the ends where the drips congregate. So I'm just going to leave them on here. I don't mind if there's dark bits and light bits. I think that adds to the um, the niceness. Can you see it? Oops, there we go. Um, so yeah, I've got the lace. I want to do some more doilies, but they're, they're super fragile. I also want to do a little bit of... Um, coffee dyeing with stencils. So I'm just going to take this lace out of here and again lay it on top of the pile of this mush mess. It's a nice colour that actually, I wouldn't say it were teal, it looks more like turquoise but it's it's nice. 
So I'm just going to move my water to the side in my very tea kitchen. And just if my hands a little wash, get the blow off. So yeah, my kitchen is like ridiculously small. Ridiculously small. Um, this work surface over here is probably about a foot. And um, <laughs> yeah, not much room in here. The other side's probably about two and a bit foot. So I don't have much work surface. And on that side, there's my kettle and my toaster and my griller and the canisters and all that stuff. Right, so I'm going to get some papers now. I've brought all my stencils down. Some stencils work, some stencils don't. So this is a technique. Oh, I'll need to try and dye some tissue paper. <clears throat> but I thought tissue paper, that's just going to go to mush, isn't it? That is just going to disintegrate, but... Right, so I've got this cover. What was I doing with this? I don't know. It's card, so it'd be nice to just it'd be nice to just dye it. So, hmm, I've got the blue mess here. So I'm gonna have to tilt you back so that you're looking over there. And all I'm gonna do with this, I've seen people do this before, it works for them, it doesn't always work for me. So bottom, I'm just going to spritz with coffee. This is where I end up with it all over my work surface and my tiles and my fridge and everywhere. And I'm going to pick a stencil. Let's just pick this one. There is, people say there is like a, a knack to this. And you spritz again. I, I haven't got the knack yet. I'm really not very good at this. Sorry, you're not even fully in shot there, are you? It's a bit weird to do in this in the kitchen because on a desk you kind of know where you need to be. <laughs> so you just spritz and rub your paper down and hopefully that should <laughs> should pick up the pattern. Whether it has or not, I don't really know. Let's have a look. Nope, it really hasn't. Why does this always happen to me? What am I doing wrong? I don't know. And it hasn't gone right on that one either. It's, well, it's made a mushy mess. And I suppose, you know, that'll do for a piece of card. Some people put their stencils in a bowl. Like I've just had the bowl of dye. They will put paper stencil, paper stencil, let it soak, lift it out, dry it in the sun. There's loads and loads and loads of different ways. I think somebody said stencils with less openings. Mine have all got big openings. Um, stencil better. I don't really know. Let's try. Let's try. Can but try. I saw, um, I think it was Pam at the Paper Outpost do this. And she just reeled off loads of paper and it looked fantastic. I'm like, oh, when I do it, it don't go like that. I haven't got anything like Maybe I shouldn't put the coffee underneath. Maybe I should just put it on the top and then it would go through the stencil onto the bottom bit. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. Eh? Trial and error. That's all I can say to anybody who's a beginner and is wondering how you do things. <laughs> Don't watch my videos. <laughs> uh, it's trial and error and you don't know until you try things if they're going to work or not. So... Let's see if that one's worked. Oh, bit better. Bit better. Yay! I've got a bit of a pattern. It's not all over it, but um, I'm going to sit it on the blue because I don't mind if it gets a bit of blue on the back. Has it done it on this one? Probably not. A little bit. Looks more like somebody's blown bubbles on it, but even that's a nice decoration. So I'm trying to find a, a stencil that's... Not quite as holy. Big, bigger, smaller holes. I need smaller holes. I need a piece of paper. Right, I'm not going to spritz the bottom one this time. I'm not. Okay, we'll see if this makes a difference. Oh my days. I've got some white paper somewhere. Over here. That's actually a white card. 
I do want it coffee though, but I don't love it. Uh, where's the paper? <sighs> right, I'm going to try something different. Put the stencil down, then spritz. Coffee all over my kitchen. Then put the paper down. Rub it down. Can you see me? Yep. Oh, my knee's hurting now. I kind of need to sit down for a bit. I'm trying not to stand on my actual poorly knee. This one looks like it might work, but then I'm not going to be fooled by it because I've been fooled by it in the past. <laughs> I love it when you see people with these coffee dyed papers that have got a perfect stencil imprint on them. I just can't seem to achieve that. I've tried the layering them up and letting them dry with stencil in between. I've tried this. That's not bad. Oh, that's quite nice, actually. Yay. Oh, so you, okay, maybe not putting it on the bottom sheets, the best approach, because I've got... A, no, that's just a, a wibbly-wobbly mess, but I don't really care. It's come out better. I'm going to do a book page. That's got quite a lot of blue on it, but it doesn't really matter. She really stencil a book page, and no, there's not a point, is there really? Because you won't be able to see the pattern. So, yeah, I think um, what people say about the give me some more white paper. Um, what people say about the stencil not having as many open bits is probably why this one's working better. Just gotta move my chair and get some more paper. Nice paper, isn't it? I'm going to coffee dye some card because I really want some coffee dyed card. I'm totally out of it. So there we go. Stencil down, spray and smoosh. Some people do the most gorgeous papers. I had some sent to me actually that a lady made. Um, and oh my goodness, they were wonderful. Not like mine. <laughs> Not at all like mine. But anyway. At least I've got one semi-decent one. That's that's quite nice, that one. Except for the bottom bit. But I don't worry about that because you can always cut them down. Right, let's see what this comes out like. Sorry there. Mm, not bad. Not too bad. Not brilliant, but not bad. I'm happy with these. And the thing we're doing it this way is... You're not soaking the paper, so it's easier for these top ones to dry a bit more. I don't really want to keep doing the same stencil, though. That kind of defeats the object, doesn't it? If you're wanting some different stenciled papers. Let's see if this one works. We do not know, but we will try. So, yeah, the, dy the dyeing with food colouring is, yeah, you can just... You can dye anything with food colouring. You can dye anything with tea and coffee. I really want some... Um, when I've finished doing this little bit, I'm going to... I want some coffee dyed cheesecloth. So I've got some cheesecloth to dye and some embroidery floss. Just get that nice coffee dyed um, look. I don't know sometimes if it's good to spray more coffee on or this is going very ripply. Must be a bit of a rubbish paper. It is only a cheap pack of paper from Home Bargains. Mm, again, not bad. Quite happy with that. It's the underneath one that's a bit. Maybe, well, even that's not too bad. It's acceptable. <laughs> it's acceptable. Right, I'm just going to do one more and then, um, shall we try and get this one? Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's like a bit of a, I don't know, but there's not like loads of open spaces, is there? Just try and get a bit more coffee around and get some paper from over here. And there we go. See, I prefer actually coffee dyed paper. This is quite white with a bit of a coffee kind of pattern on it. But like I say, I haven't been able to achieve the other thing yet. 
But if I've got some nice print, that's fine. That makes me happy. I don't know why I'm getting ripples in this paper. This one looks like it may have worked, but it can fool you. You pick it up and it doesn't look at all like it does on there. So let's have a look. Oh, not bad. Yeah, I quite like that. Oh, I'm happy with these coffee dyes. The last time I did coffee dyes, I just got all these big new stencils, these A4 stencils, and I came down and I coffee dyed and I was so disappointed. It was like, oh, why can't I have a coffee dye properly? Just need another piece of paper. I know I've put that on top of a ready coffee dyed, but I'm just seeing if it'll pick it up a bit more. Don't know. We don't know. You don't know until you try. You don't know. I think I've just lifted a bit of my stencil. I've got a lump there to make sure I don't pierce my paper. That's another thing to be careful with your stencils when you're rubbing. Just some bits can stick up like that bit there. <laughs> so I'm not going to get pattern on that bit, am I? Although I'm very determined. <laughs> I'll just end up with a hole in my paper, knowing me. But it's okay. So, this looks a big hullabaloo of a mess, doesn't it, this kitchen? And I need to sit down after this. That's not great, but it, it, it's okay. It's okay. I'll live with it. And that's just a big coffee-dyed mess. Right, so now I just want... Um, that's a, that's a coffee dyed mess as well, isn't it? Sometimes, just to make things simple, if you just want coffee dyed or tea dyed, I just literally run a tea bag over it. Run a tea bag over it to colour it. Get right to the edges. And then I may just come along with a little scrunchy tea bag. Can you see me? And I just stipple. And that way you get a pattern anyway. It's not a stencil, it's not a, a definitive pattern. But you can do this with tea bags until tea starts coming out of them and then you need to stop. <laughs> um, or you can do it with a rolled up bit of paper towel, old rags, whatever you can use. Right, I need to ditch that. And I want some red medical. I'm just gonna spray, I think, because I don't have um, I don't have coffee dye in a pot, do I? Have I got a little bowl? I have got a little bowl. It is a really little bowl. But that's okay. I'm just gonna take some of me. Can you see me? <laughs> I'm gonna take some of my coffee dye out of here. I bought a really cheapo coffee for this. Um, I found a coffee in Tesco's for 99 pence for the jar. So I don't, you don't use good stuff. Don't use your best coffee. So I've just got that embroidery floss in there. I'm just going to stick me a bit of um, cheesecloth in there and just colour that. But yeah, colour dyeing is pretty much the same as coffee dyeing. You know, just because it's a colour... Don't mean you do anything any different. I'm just going to rinse that out. Wing it out, should I say. And that'll be a nice pale coffee colour. That embroidery floss. I'm just going to lay that out on the mess that is here. And some coffee splats are quite nice as well on your papers. <laughs> um, has this got right through to the middle? Cross it as it's coffee, so they just soak it up on it. So I'm gonna wring that out, and it looks quite dark until you open it out, and it's like a bit of a caramelly colour. I don't know if I want it a bit darker than that. No, actually, that's nice. So that's a piece of dyed cheesecloth. So all I've got to do now <laughs> is let all this dry around my kitchen. And make myself some dinner in between. 
So I'm just going to pour this coffee away because I've got plenty of that cheap old coffee. Uh, I need to wash my stencils, I need to move all these. I was going <coughs> to coffee spritz this. I've already got coffee on it off my hands. It's printer paper, which is nice actually. So I'm just going to, I don't know. Roughly, roughly dye it a little bit. I don't care if it's precise and pristine, just as long as it's got a bit of coffee ishness to it. I stand it on something else that's coffee dyed, and there we go. I'm just going to leave that. I know it's bent in two, so the middle bit's still going to be white. Actually, yeah, I don't like that. Just going to spritz it. Spritz, that's all, and leave the spritz marks. So, later on, <clears throat> I'm going to be dyeing some other colour pages. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to be trying to do them with watercolours and stuff. Because I've got a million and one book page ideas, as you know. I think I've done about six videos now on um, dyeing book pages. So... <sighs> Yep, guess what? I've got another video on how to use book pages, <laughs> but I do kind of need to, um, what am I talking about? I need to, yeah, I need to colourise some more pages because the only ones I've got at the minute are pink, blue and lemon. I'd like some other colours. So, so yeah, these food colourings were from eBay. Seven quid's a bit pricey. It's a bit of an outlay if you, you know, you're on a very tight budget but the little bottles there's, there's 12 colours and they do last ages because you don't really use that much of them that's still got loads in and you saw how much I put in that water so they last for a very long time I've got coffee all over my tiles now oh, that's the only thing you've got a, a big massive clean up job after you've done your paper dyeing right so I'm going to go and have a sit down and rest my little knee and I hope you enjoyed that. I haven't done as much as I wanted to do, but I'm very limited in my kitchen space. So I'm just going to let these dry and hopefully come back and sh I might show you them on the beginning of the next video because that's what I tend to do in it. I make some, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> go away and decorate it and then come back and show you it later. So... I think that's what I may be doing with these. I'm just going to lay them out a bit more. Splats are quite nice. I like that one. I think that's pretty much the best one I've done today. That's come out really nice. Top to bottom, apart from that little corner that got missed. I've got a bit of blue on it, but I don't mind that. Actually, I'm getting a bit of blue on all of them. Oh my days, I don't want blue on all of them. Let me just get them up. The blue's coming through. I don't mind different colours. I actually did some um, pink paper. Oh dear, I've torn one of my really good sheets. Typical. You've got to be careful with them, Sue. They're very fragile. I didn't really want the blue on, but the blue's come off the lace. Oh, the joys. You see, I shouldn't have just stacked them on top of each other. Because some are coffee and some are not. I'll just move them. But I can do some more later on. I've got, plenty, I've got plenty of paper, that's for sure. Right, I'm just going to stick. So I'll try and stick the coffee ones with the coffee ones and the blue with the blue. It's because I've got all sorts on here. And we've got some little pools of blue. So that one didn't really take the stencil, so it doesn't really matter if that mops up some of the blue. At least it'll give it a bit of colour, won't it? So yeah, you can just use your papers to mop mop up a bit. And that gives you a pattern. So there we go. Mess, I'm off. I'm going to have a cup of tea. <laughs> and then I'll come back to this chaos, hoping, hoping that it's dry enough for me to move somewhere else. I might actually put it outside because it's quite sunny today. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. It wasn't the best ch tutorial. It was a demonstration of how not to do really, isn't it? But um, <laughs> it's fun. It's all fun. It's all trial and error. If you don't try things, you don't know what you're going to get. 
and sometimes you're pleasantly surprised by what you do get. I really like that bed sheet. So I might actually dye a bigger piece in the same solution because I'm going to keep that solution in a jar now um, and make a, make a journal cover out of it. And that could be the fastening. That could be the bit that I tie it closed with or even a piece of this, um, this lace. It's very thin lace is that, but at least it's gone blue. So <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that little uh, messy video and thank you for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye.